Some massive news has just dropped as reports revealed that the Chicago Bulls and Pascal Siakam could be linked. I'm your host, Joey Mercer. This is another episode of Bulls Digest. And before we get into it there today, I just want to say that about 85% of you that watch these videos are not subscribed. So if you aren't already subscribed to the channel, make sure to go down below, hit that subscribe button, turn on the bell for notifications, and every single time we upload, you will be notified and be able to stay up to date with your Chicago Bulls. Now, without further ado, this is some massive news, so let's get right into it. So the topic at hand today is Siakam for Levine. So there were reports that have recently come out just a couple of hours ago from when I'm recording this, talking about Siakam landing in different locations. I mean, you've heard the Kings, you've heard the 76ers, you've heard other teams, but we barely even touched on the Bulls. I mean, news about that kind of dropped a little over a month ago, and we haven't really surfaced over that ever since. This was the tweet that came out from the Dunk Central saying, it very well could be to a team that no one knows like the Bulls. And that is a Western Conference executive on potential landing spots for Pascal Siakam. I saw the article which was linked at the bottom there via BitLie and it was very interesting to me to see that this was by Sam Amico, not just a random website or a random writer. So let's jump right into that one. It said Raptors reportedly nearing Pascal Siakam trade. So this one was obviously up on Hoops hype or Hoops rumors. And uh, yeah, I mean, it's crazy to think that a former, even just last season actually, all NBA talent could be joining the Chicago Bulls in a potential Zach Levine trade because Levine is the highest trade asset that the Chicago Bulls currently have. We've talked about Caruso having a lot of trade value, but his value is based on his contract and for what he does is valuable more to other teams than what you see in the box score. For the actual total value on the team, it's got to be Zach Levine. I know the contract's big, but when you're swapping a contract for Siakam and Levine, I mean, it's pretty even there, and there's not that much of a discrepancy. Next thing we saw was the Raptors and power forward Pascal Siakam are closing in on a parting of ways, according to Chris Haynes of Bleacher Report. We can assume that means the Raptors will trade Siakam ahead of the February 8th deadline to make a deal, as he has been widely reported. And that's true. I mean, I believe he was scratched from the last Toronto Raptors game, which kind of led to a little bit of speculation there. There are players around the league who aren't playing and they seem to be healthy scratches or they're out for very minor injuries that you wouldn't believe with wrestling not being allowed anymore. But it's very interesting to see that the Raptors are taking this route and not just having him play until a trade goes in place. I guess they don't want to risk an injury and currently they're not in a solid playoff spot. So instead of having him be injured, trade him at the high value as he's coming off some pretty hot play as of late and I'd love to have him on the Chicago Bulls. The next thing that we saw was where Siakam goes, no one knows. The Pacers were recently said to be the leaders in the Siakam sweepstakes but the Warriors, Mavericks, and Hawks could be in the mix too. Or perhaps the Kings will again strike up their failed talks with Toronto. Either way, it's clear the Raptors are willing to move Siakam at the right price. As one Western Conference executive told Hoops Wire, it very well could be to a team that no one knows, like the Bulls, which definitely piqued my interest. I know the Sacramento Kings initially wanted to get OG Ananobi, and after him being dealt to the New York Knicks in a Pretty big trade, actually. Uh, it Obviously, they're not getting him anymore. He's not going to be moved from the Knicks before the deadline. He's there to stay at this point in time. Although his contract is up in the offseason. Same with Pascal Siakam goes. The Kings are not willing to give up Keegan Murray for Pascal Siakam, as they have heard now that there are links between Zach Levine and Siakam, and the Kings have been interested in both Levine and Siakam. They're trying to see where this goes, and they don't want to be the third party trying to get either person when it comes down to a trade that could be done between the Bulls and the Toronto Raptors. The value for the Raptors and Bulls trade could be a lot higher than what the Kings are able to offer, as I've heard a lot of things around the league between Kevin Herter, Harrison Burns, and Davion Mitchell, and maybe some picks. Those are all guys that are currently on the Kings, either struggling if you're Kevin Herter, not really fitting over the past two years if you're Harrison Burns being very up and down. And then Davion Mitchell has not been the player that we thought he was going to be as he came in the league and did come in as an older player so you wanted him to be a nearly finished project right away 
We're basically taking on the scraps of the Kings, whatever team takes on that value. So Keegan Murray would have to be involved. For us to trade Zach Levine to the Kings, I would almost expect Keegan Murray in return. I can't really think of another player that would kind of match what we're looking for there. They would obviously have to add more to make up the salary. But even Malik Monk, I wouldn't be as high upon because I don't really think you're improving there. You're actually getting a little bit worse. So it doesn't make much sense for that deal to happen. And I can't see them ever moving Fox. Fox's value right now, I'd say, would be higher than Levine's because he's having a hell of a year. And same thing with DeMontis Sabonis. I mean, his value is through the roof, having a few triple doubles, if not fringe, just on the brink of getting a triple double as of late. So Zach Levine's value wouldn't be there. So Keegan Murray would be the target point, which is exactly who I think the Toronto Raptors have been aiming for if they're looking to trade Pascal Siakam, sorry, to the Sacramento Kings. It's crazy to see how these three teams are now very linked and the trade deadline's only just a couple of weeks away. What will go down could be a potential three-team trade and I'm not sure who is going to go where. The Raptors are in a position now where this year it's a very bad draft class so you want to make every attempt to push and they seem very solid with the additions of Emmanuel Quickly and RJ Barrett. However, I really could see them tanking where they are in a spot where they could start to slip, slip, slip and get some draft capital for the future and just kind of write off this year as it doesn't seem like they're going to be in a solid playoff push where they are too in the standings currently. So I could see them being the third team out. I could see Siakam going to the Bulls. I could see Levine going to the Kings and I could see some lower end talent going to the Raptors for salary dump. Uh, expiring contracts, old guys. I could see like a Harrison Burns type going there. I could see some draft capital from the Kings or the Bulls going that way. I could definitely see a three-team trade happening there. That hasn't been reported. That's just what I personally am speculating and reporting here on Bulls Digest. The last thing that we saw in this article to sum it up was, of course, teams interested in Siakam have to gauge his long-term interest in them, given the fact he has an expiring contract. That makes him more tradable, but perhaps more difficult for the Raptors to land what they seek in return. And it's true. I mean, people like to take on the expiring contracts. Why not take a, a, a flyer on a guy? And if his contract ends in the offseason, you could probably try to get him for a deal if you made a deep playoff push and, you know, expect to bring in some other talent and promise him that he could take a discount at, to go after a chip. However... A lot of people around the league are speculating that whatever team the Toronto Raptors trade Pascal Siakam to, they could be looking to sign him again in the offseason. But I wouldn't be too inclined to believe that. That could fall under the guidelines of tampering, and I would definitely take a risk when it comes to getting Pascal Siakam on the team. I feel like if he got happy in the position... Whatever team it may be, I feel like it could be the Chicago Bulls for sure. I feel like that's a perfect landing spot. It fixes what we have, and we can make that push that we so rightfully deserve. As we play the Golden State Warriors tonight, and I feel like we can get a big win and just be two games below 500. This has been your host, Joey Mercer. I hope you all enjoyed the video there today. Some crazy speculation of trades have been popping there lately, and I'm glad I was able to report this one to hear you First, on Bulls Digest, as soon as I got the information, got my own take on it, kind of gathered my thoughts on it a, lot, a little bit over the past hour or so, and was able to uh, bring it to all of you. I hope you all enjoyed as usual. Make sure to go down below, like, and comment on the video. Subscribe to the channel as uh, we keep growing here. I love the family that we've got going here on Bulls Digest, because that's really what it is. I love to see you guys tuning in, giving your input, and I'd like to see you guys enjoying the content. So I can't wait to see you all until the next one. This has been your host, Joey Mercer, as always. Sign off.